Hey everybody and welcome to another Android tutorial in our series from the electronicarmory.com. I'm your electronic armor for Android and in this tutorial we'll be discussing the observer design pattern using Green Robot's event bus. The observer pattern allows us to accomplish something extraordinary in software architecture. What that allows us to accomplish is low coupling, high cohesion. What that means is we are able to avoid connecting all of our class instances together via references and code but maintain a system of these objects that communicate via an event bus system. In other words, and instead of passing references of objects back and forth to allow us to make a callback on a parent activity, for example, we can use event bus instead. You'll begin to understand this better when we go through the code in Android Studio. So low coupling refers to limiting the number of connections between classes. High cohesion refers to the degree which functionality belongs to a class. In other words, does a car object have a change tire function, or does that belong to the mechanic object? Having objects contain logic that belongs to that class makes the overall application have a higher robustness, reliability, reusability, and understandability. EventBus helps us maintain this exact thing by having a class instance register with EventBus to start receiving events in the app. Another object, say a child activity, then creates an event and sends that to event bus. If it's the same event that the first object cares about, it'll get notified. Never does that second object need to know about the first or its interface. That's what we call low coupling. These events that event bus uses are just plain old Java objects that you can create and pass around. If you want an event fired off when the user logs in, let's say, you can create a new instance of your user logged in event and send that to event bus. EventBus will notify any objects in the application that have registered a callback for that event. EventBus works by registering as a subscriber to an event. This will be our main activity as it will subscribe to the event posted by our child activity, namely the data that we'll generate in that child activity. We'll create an event and pass that to EventBus from our child activity. Our child activity is known as the publisher. We're going to create a quick application that has two different activities. We'll have our main activity and it'll have a text field to display some text that's captured from our child activity. Normally you might pass a reference to the main activity to the child activity so that that child activity can call a function that exists back in the main activity. If you're really smart you might even have an interface that that second activity has to adhere to in the main activity so you can keep the interfaces between them civil. This is a bad approach since it's not scalable and can quickly get out of hand. Imagine the case where we have multiple objects that care about the data that's generated in that child activity. This starts to look like our network closet in the previous slide. With event bus, we would instead register both objects to subscribe to an event when the data is created in the child activity. In the example code that I'll show here in a second, I'm only going to have one activity and one object that cares about that event. How easy is it to set up event bus? It's as easy as five simple steps. First, add the following to your Gradle file. This will tell Android Studio via Gradle to go and download this particular library so that we can use it in our application. Next, define your message class. This is a separate class that'll handle the messaging for event bus. These can be empty classes. If you want to pass any important information back and forth, you can add additional fields if necessary, such as a string or another object or a reference to an object. Next, register a class to listen to the events. In our case, this is going to be defined in our main activity class. This line tells EventBus that this particular class cares about EventBus events. Since EventBus is a singleton, we call the getDefault method, which returns the instance of EventBus, which we can then use the register method to register this particular class. Again, that's going to be our main activity class. Next, we've already told EventBus that we want to register to receive notifications, but then we have to tell EventBus what kind of events we want to subscribe to. So to subscribe to those events, we use the annotation at subscribe above our on event method. And this is what the declaration of that method looks like. It's a public method. It returns nothing. It has to be called on event capital E. And then as the parameter, set the parameter class type to be whatever your custom message event is, and then the name of that variable. So in this case, it's called custom method event. It's our class and event being our event. And if our event has any fields, we can then access those fields or that data and pull that out of the event instance. So in our example, in our child activity, we're going to have a text field that passes data back to that main activity. In our custom message event class, we're just going to have a string in there that we can set, and then that passes back through event bus to our main activity. Finally, in our child activity, we need a way to generate that event. 
So what we're going to do is create an instance of our custom message event, call that event, call new on it. And then if we have any custom fields, such as this custom field string, we're going to set that value and then use that to post to event bus. Now remember, there's only one instance of event bus, and we can get that from anywhere in our application by calling event bus .get default. And on that instance, we can call dot post and then pass in our event to our event bus. And if you remember, any objects that have that at subscribe on event that have this particular custom message event declared in their parameter will get a callback automatically. This is really helpful if one event happens somewhere in your application, but many, many objects care about it. Let's say 100 different objects care about that particular event. And so when the last line of this code gets executed, the dot post, instantly all of our other objects that have subscribed to the custom message event class event will have their on event methods executed. All right, so let's look at this in code. Okay, we're starting out with our main activity. It's just a blank activity. And now if you remember from that first step, we have to add the library for event bus to our Android manifest file. So find your dependencies and paste that in under the rest of your dependencies. All right, since we changed the Gradle file, we have to then sync this back to our project so that our project will recognize these new libraries. So click Sync Now, wait a few seconds, and now we can get started using Green Robot's event bus. All right, so going back to the main activity, we want the main activity to register for events and have some code executed when those events get fired. So in my onCreate method, I'm going to tell event bus that this particular class wants to register for events. And the way that I do that is using the register method. So I get the default event bus object, which again is a singleton, only one ever exists in the entire system, and we call dot register on that. Okay, so I've told event bus that this particular class cares about events, but I haven't told it which events it cares about. So again, to do that, we use the at subscribe annotation above our method on event. Okay, at this point, we don't have a class declared for a particular event, so let me just go ahead and type it in, and we can create it later. Okay, I've added just a simple debug statement so we can check to see if this event fired later. Okay, so obviously we haven't declared our, our custom message event class, and so Android Studio has highlighted this in red. So what we can do is we can double click on it, and either hit this red light bulb or hit Option Enter or Alt Enter and it'll bring up this context menu. Select the first option to create the class for us, hit Enter, choose the package that it's going to be placed in, and Android Studio has created this class for us. So this is a really nice workflow method so you don't have to create the class yourself. All right, now if you only care about the fact that the event was fired, you don't have to do anything else in declaring your class. However, we want some data to be passed back with that event, and that data is gonna be a string. In your own application, you can put whatever you want here. You can have multiple fields, you can have other objects, etc. But let me just show you how to put a string in here. Okay, simply declare your field as you normally would in Java. And since I made this private, I have to declare getters and setters. In Android Studio, this is very easy. Hit Command or Control N to bring up our Generate menu. Hit your down arrow until you get to Getter and Setter. Hit Enter. Select the field that you want to declare the Getter and Setter for, and Android Studio automatically creates this for you. Okay, so we're done. Save that and go back to our main activity. Now you can see our custom message event is no longer highlighted in red, meaning that it's now declared. So this app should compile and run just fine. Now obviously it doesn't do anything, so we need something in order to create or post that event back to this main activity. And we'll do that in a child activity, so let me go ahead and create that now. It's a pretty simple operation, so I'm just going to skip right through this. If you want more detail on how to create a child activity and launch it via an intent, you can watch one of my previous videos. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create the child activity. And the way that I usually do this is select my package, hit Control or Command N, go down to Activity. I'm just going to create another basic activity. I'm going to wire it up and we can resume the tutorial.
All right, now that I set up my child activity, we'll go over and look at the interface. In our child activity, we're going to type into this edit text field, hit the trigger event button, and what that's going to do is create an event, send that to event bus. Any subscribers to that event will receive notification of that event and its data that's contained in that event. And then we're actually going to kill this activity and go back to the main event. In our main activity, when that event gets posted, we want to set the text field in that view to the results in the child text view. So let's take a look at the main activity. And so here is where the results will appear. So by clicking on launch child, goes to our child activity, enter some data in this text field, hit trigger event, that's going to go back to our main activity and fill in these results. So let's see how to do that. So in my child activity, I have an on-click listener set up. And what I'm going to do is get a string value out of the text field, create an event, put that string in that event, and then post that event. Okay, and that's all there is to it. So again, in this first line of code, we're pulling out the text that the user entered, storing that in a string, creating a new event with this custom class that we've created, setting one of our fields and passing it the string, and then posting that event object to event bus. Now in main activity, we already have our onEvent method created, and as a parameter, our custom message event is being passed in. So we can replace this debug statement with something a little bit more informative. Okay, so this will print it out to our debug statement, but what we really want to do is post this into our edit text on this activity. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Okay, and then finally, we just call finish to kill the activity, and that'll return to the main activity. So let's go to the main activity now. Okay. So after we enter text in our child activity and hit the trigger event button, this event will get called. And actually, it'll get called before our child activity is done. So this will happen in the background. But with event bus, these events actually happen on the main thread, which is great because you don't want to update the UI at any other thread besides the main thread, sometimes called the UI thread. So this on event method always gets called on the UI thread. Let's run this application and see what we have. Okay, so here's our application. Now we'll launch that child activity. Type in our new message. Hit the trigger event button. And you can see back in our main activity, that text field is changed. We go back to our child activity. Type in a new message. Hit trigger event. And see that our main activity gets notified of that new event, pulls the message out of that event, and sets the text field to the data that we passed into that event. All right, and that's the basics of using event bus. Now you might be wondering why we would go through all this trouble to set up this messaging system when we could have just passed that back through the intent. Well, as I mentioned in the first place, if you have lots of objects that care about that event, this is the easiest and most preferred way to pass that event to multiple objects. So for example, if you had multiple fragments that cared about this event happening, you'd have to keep references to both of those fragments and know what those interfaces look like so that you can interface and set the data in with within each one of those fragments and always know which fragments existed. Maybe one fragment exists, maybe both of them exist, and you have to keep track of that. With event bus, you don't really care who cares about your events, but instead you just post those events and if anybody's listening, they'll get that notification. It's very similar to a radio station where you're broadcasting on a certain frequency and anybody that's interested in that radio station can tune into that radio station and listen. If there's one person listening, a hundred people listening, a thousand people listening, you don't need to know about who's listening and who's not listening. On the flip side, not using event bus is more analogous to the postal service where you have to know the address of every single recipient that you're going to send a letter to. That's not only time consuming, but if somebody moves, no longer wishes to receive that notification, or just doesn't exist anymore, then all sorts of problems arise. And you can see how this gets really out of hand if you're trying to manage all these relationships, especially as it scales. So I use EventBus in almost every single one of my applications. There's really no reason not to. Once you set it up, it's a breeze to use, and it'll make your life so much easier. I hope you found this useful.
Please join us next time for some more Android development tutorials as well as other tutorials on iOS, 3D, electronics, software development, and more. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you'd like to see more.